look at your sky. I don't know about your sky, but I noticed this in the spring. There was a flat gray cover with no variation. Here you see some little variation, but usually it's when it's gray, it's billowing clouds. And you usually see that it, it means that it's going to either snow or that rain is coming. But this is a flat gray is more normal for snow. And this spring, it was day after day after day after day of a flat gray. And that's not even normal for snow. And it isn't like it was going to snow or was going to rain because it never did. Uh, or, or, it did or it did rain, but we never saw the sun. And here it is, it's May 6th. And I'm waiting for it to actually be warm. Occasionally we get a warm day, but it's not really warm anymore. And neither is it in the summertime. In the summertime, July and August, August we used to be the hottest month. As of 2014, I noticed that August was about, it was, it, it felt like September. You know, like when September hits, things start to change because the, you know, the, the earth is turning. But over, very hot and very humid is, is normal for August. That's what it is. That's the hottest month. Not anymore. And this spring, I said, well, when are we going to have, when is this flat grade going to leave us? This is continuous. And I know that there's a thing called seasonal affective disorder. You might know that. Before I get into that, I looked on the web for cloud cover. When is this going to end? And I saw that for <laughs> everything that could be predicted or for, could be forecast, it was going to be overcast. This, this isn't normal. Spring, there's sunlight and blue skies. Even in the winter, you'll get blue skies. Where are the blue skies? Where is the sun? As you can see, the sun is trying to break through. It's, a, it's stronger because the earth is turning, so it's trying to break through, unlike spring isn't as strong or winter isn't as strong at all. But as you turn towards spring and summer, it's going to get stronger, so it's really trying to break through, and so that's where you'll see a little more variation in the cloud. But where are the blue skies? Usually when it, you know, it's going to rain, you're going to see gray. That's normal. See, our young people and also older people, people are forgetting, and young people just don't know. They are going to be told that this, they're told, well, that's the reason. Well, if it's that reason, then why in the hottest parts of the world is do we go to visit these parts of the world first of all is because it's not gray it's not just warm but it's not gray but it's very hot at the equator right and any the parts surrounding the equator it's always blue so, so it's not warmth don't tell me it's heat or very hot this is not normal Granted, things are growing, and I can't believe that things are growing. But are we going to be denied a blue sky? Did, did they do what they said that they were going to do, that they were thinking about, and they did it? Look at this. Now, I have been noticing that flat sky getting more and more depressed because I live alone and I live without heat. Because fuel is too expensive. I have a push mower, and I don't have a car, so don't tell me that I'm contributing to anything uh, and I hand wash my clothes I mean <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there was a there's a great I think it's a great YouTube channel out of Britain and he was an author and his name is Richard Vobes V-O-B-E-S Richard Vobes and he noticed the same thing and it's over in Britain that there's too much rain and it has flooded out the farmlands but it's constantly gray no sun once you'll get some sunshine but there'd been a lot of rain and gray cloud cover sounds like there was more rain there see England is different people don't notice this in England the reason why is because you have to blame a Christmas Carol is because there was snow in a Christmas Carol but normally Britain does not have snow why it's because they have a Gulf Stream that goes past them, which keeps their summers mild 
and their winters mild as well. They, they, they don't get snow and ice, so it's very at once in a while, but it's very abnormal for them to get that. So the children watch the Christmas Carol, and the people who forget watch that, and they say, that's right, it must be warming because there's no snow, but that's normal. I remember my uncle, I had an uncle Roy, who my, used to visit from England, my uncle Roy, my aunt Anne, and their daughter. He used to come and visit, and he, he stopped visiting. He said he couldn't take the heat of the summers here. The summers were way too hot. Everything was more mild in Britain. So he stopped visiting because he couldn't take it. And it was. It was sweltering. The summertime was over 100 degrees. Uh, most of it. <laughs> if it. This year, last year, basically, it was 89, 90, three, three days. And that was, they said, oh, heat wave. All summer, three days tops. I swear to God, it was only two. That was a heat wave. That was this deadly deadly heat wave that was going to kill the planet. I go, no, it's normally over 100. And the hottest month is is August. No, it isn't anymore. It's like spring. No, so it's like um, it's like September, not we're not even spring. But this is this is ridiculous. This is May 6th and look at this. It's not over with. It's never going to end. Tomorrow we're supposed to get full. Today we're supposed to get full sun. Tomorrow we're supposed to get full sun. And it's supposed to be in the early, in the um, like 74 tops maybe for like an, I, usually like there's an hour a day in the afternoon that it's just like a little bit warmer, maybe two hours. It's like one or two degrees warmer. It's bizarre. And it's not because of heat, because cold doesn't make heat, you know. Oh, see, heat, cold doesn't make heat, and heat doesn't make cold. Cold is cold, and hot is hot. And heat, usually you get more blue skies. And you know when a storm is coming. I don't even know when a storm is coming anymore. You look up in the sky, you see cumulus clouds. You know, just tiny clouds sprayed across the sky. Kids, I'm sure, don't even know what that is anymore. And then you, you'll see a break in the clouds when the storm comes, it's gray, and the storm goes, it, it breaks after the storm leaves. It's not constant like this. I used to work at a flower shop. There's a thing called seasonal affective disorder. It's called SAD because it makes you very sad because the gray of winter and the death of everything goes on for way too long. You can't take it anymore. Because it, where I live, it's about eight months. It, it's just so long. So when April hits, even though things are popping out of the ground, the gray has been just too long. And even though the promise of spring is here and a little bit of life is popping up, you just can't take it anymore. So people committed suicide. And I remember doing many funerals, flowers for many funerals during that time. I mean, people, young people, people that I'd gone to school with uh, that were maybe just a few years older than I was, committed suicide because they couldn't take it anymore. And they told me at the flower shop that this is normal for um, to have suicides in the spring, especially young people. So I remember when I, I was, it was, it was October a while back, many years back, that, that, that I looked up at the sky. It was October 8th or 9th, something like that. And knowing that the winter was coming, I looked up at the sky and it had been just gray for too many days without rain, just gray. And I looked up at the sky and said, I could feel the depression hit and I go, somebody's going to commit suicide. And then a few days later, a friend of mine hung himself off a bridge. I hadn't seen them for ages. It was somebody came and told me that they... Um, I just felt it was going to happen. This, this is, I suppose if you want, if you think that there's too many people on this earth, you know, <laughs> this is a way to do it, isn't it? And if you can visit, if you're wealthy enough to visit a warmer climates, if you're able, wealthy enough to fly around in your jet stream, which one flight uses more than uh, expels more carbon emissions than um, than a family of five in a year. If you're able to do that, 
then you don't care. Or if you have your own organic farm and greenhouses, wherever you get your food from, or you're buying up farmland and you're growing bugs in uh, lab buildings and spraying the crops with weed killer and making tons of money, then you don't care. But we care. And we're just eking out a living, looking for sunlight. What makes us happy? And this is, you know, right now we have, the carbon is uh, 0 0.04 in the air, 0 0.04. When it hit 0 0.02, all life on earth dies. 30 years ago, we had, it was 0 0.03%. So we were one point away from one zero zero point zero one. A uh, one point one percentage is one would be one point zero zero. That's how small this is. It, so the alarm bells, the real crisis, was too little rather than too much. I've already said too much, but look at your sky and wake up. Tell me, is this normal where you are? Have you noticed this anywhere else or do you live in very hot climates where this isn't quite normal yet? But this isn't normal. And we have to say something because I've said too much. I'll be back on if I haven't said too much. I'll talk more about this. God bless you. And we have to do more than pray. We have to do more than pray. We have to let them know in a civil, lawful letter or a vote. But we really have to not if we're sheeps and we you know sheeps like the sunshine too but we can't live in our dens because we'll die there let me know what you think by the way in the comments god bless you goodbye